Hi, this is Michael Leahy of the Irish Freedom Party. Um, I want to talk to you today about a sensitive topic. Uh, we are a party which to some extent rushes in where angels sometimes fear to tread. And I want to talk to you today about the war in Ukraine. And in particular, how the government are using the conflict in Ukraine to create a crisis at home or to extend a series of crises at home. It's important to remember that this is a conflict on the other side of Europe and the government are manipulating that crisis to get their way in in respect to several significant policy issues. Um, first of all, in regard to neutrality, it is very obvious that the government or successive governments have been targeting the issue of neutrality under pressure from our European uh, so-called allies. Um, our um, foreign minister, Mr. Hugh Coveney, seems to think that because of the situation which has developed in Ukraine, uh, that this indicates a potential for a very serious threat to Ireland's neutrality and that therefore we are to Ireland's independence and sovereignty and that we, we could indeed be attacked by Russia. It's a fairly ridiculous proposal, but I think Mr. Coveney does have a sense of the ridiculous. Uh, and because of that, it is being suggested that we should therefore join with NATO. Now, I would point out that um, Irish neutrality still has 71% support among this population. And I would think that when you have a serious conflict situation like this in Europe, uh, far from indicating that it means we should join with a military alliance, it indicates the importance of a small, neutral country which can act as an honest broker between the parties. And one of the things that's missing in the present war in Ukraine is uh, there's no effort being made by the major powers uh, or indeed by the United Nations, to bring the warring parties to a, a, a legitimate peace conference. And one of the reasons for that is because there are so many, there are so few um, neutral nations which will be trusted by both sides, which are prepared to get involved and pre prepared to offer themselves as honest brokers. That is the most important role that Ireland can play in international affairs. Um, a second thing is the extent to which the um, legitimate humanitarian concerns of many people are being manipulated by government uh, to uh, bring about an open door uh, immigration policy, which is something that they have long wanted to do, but they've always fought shy of it so, in some respects. Um, the government refuses to place any cap on the number of Ukrainian refugees who will be brought into this country. And we do, of course, have an obligation to facilitate people who are genuine refugees and who are in a humanitarian situation. But that assistance must be on a temporary basis. Now, we've seen on social media the, uh, many of the people who have come to this country. Well, they certainly don't look like Ukrainians. And they certainly don't sound like Ukrainians. Um, they seem to come from various different parts of the world, and um, we are hearing reports from France and from Italy uh, that up to 30% of the Ukrainian refugees who come from that country are not from Ukraine. Uh, they are being facilitated with bogus documents by private um, uh, organizations uh, to enable them to breach the immigration rules of their own countries. This is something we have to be very, very careful of. You can either have an open door immigration policy, or you can have a social welfare system, but you simply can't have both. If we create a very attractive social welfare system, which undoubtedly in respect of people coming from the third world we have in this country, you cannot possibly expect to have an open door immigration policy because undoubtedly that will be used and abused by many people who will come to this country and will find themselves far better off under our social welfare provision than they would be working at home. Uh, there is also, of course, the issue that a, a massive open-door immigration policy places serious pressure on unskilled labour within this country and makes it extremely difficult for uh, people to find employment. And more importantly, of course, there is the housing crisis, which the government has been um, talking about for the last uh, several years. Uh, if we cannot house our own people, how are we going to house uh, up to 200,000 Ukrainian um, immigrants? Are they going to be here temporarily? How long are they going to be here for? Uh, are we going to insist that they return uh, once the crisis in, in, in the present war is over? Uh, these are things that must be examined very, very carefully. Um, it, it has, without a doubt, been stated by several of our senior government ministers, including Simon Coven and Damon Ryan, that they want to see a significant increase in the population of Ireland. 
Now, they've never given any reason for this, but um, it is very clear that at a time of falling birth rates, and whatever the reasons for that are, we, we can talk about taxation policies, why Irish people cannot afford to have children, um, but it, it, it's very questionable that at such a time why we should seek to dramatically increase our population size. And the Ireland 2040 programme, which was put forward by Minister Coveney when he was Minister for the Environment, indicates an increase in population of some 25%, up to 8 million people uh, by 2040. And of course, that population increase is going to come entirely from immigration. There is a great danger when you have that level of increase. Um, while it may be an extraordinary thing that 25% of our population will be from abroad, um, the reality is that if you take certain specific age cohorts of the Irish people, it will be far greater than 25%. It will be more like 50 to 60%. And within a reasonably short space of time, the, the native Irish people uh, will become a minority within their own country. Now, this is very much part of international planning. Um, countries are no longer regarded as separate nations, separate cultures. Their cultures are not respected. Uh, and it is seen as a beneficial thing by the international planners, uh, even those who proposed the Great Reset and the New World Order, uh, that nations would have no self-identifying specific characteristics. But the danger in this is if you bring a very large number of visitors to a country who come from completely different cultures, uh, you will engender civil strife within a country, uh, and you will... Um, as well as a general suspicion and economic problems, you will also uh, create the, the circumstances of civil strife. And this is something we have to be very, very careful of. Another thing that the government wished to bring forward in regard to the housing crisis that they have now created by um, having an open doors immigration policy is an attack on property rights. And of course, we're aware that the 39th Amendment of the Constitution uh, is in the offing. It's now past the second stage of uh, readings in the Doyle. And that proposes to delimit our property rights. Now, the final um, wording of that is not as yet decided, but the government has committed to a right to housing um, amendment to our constitution. And that would give any resident in this country the right to housing. And the only way that can be vindicated is by attacking the property rights of those people who already have houses. Um, this is being brought forward as a result of the, the Ukrainian crisis. Uh, and the government believes that if they uh, use that crisis, they may be able to get away with something uh, against which there would be great resistance if the crisis were not there. Um, it's also important to look at how the government is using the European Union or is towing the line of the European Union in respect of many of the sanctions programs uh, that the European Union uh, under Ursula von der Leyen has, has proposed. The sanctions are far more likely to damage uh, the European economies, are far more likely to damage uh, Ireland than they are to damage Russia. The Russian economy is based on uh, commodities, it's based on energy. Uh, and we need those commodities, and we need that energy. And it, it seems to me likely that the sanctions program, which we have fallen in line with, will do far more damage to us than to Russia. So it's not a very, not a particularly good policy. Ursula von der Leyen was widely regarded as one of the most incompetent defense ministers of Germany when she held that office, and she was gotten rid of by Angela Merkel and sent to Europe. And I'm afraid she now looks like she's doing a great deal of damage uh, to the European economy. Uh, we've already seen the massive increase in inflation, which is inevitable when you attack energy prices, which is going to happen by banning uh, Russian oil and gas, uh, which is going to take place now that the French elections are safely out of the way. Another very unfortunate aspect of what the government are doing in terms of this crisis is promoting a kind of racist Russophobia. Um, I always find that whenever you scratch the surface of liberalism, you will find intolerance and usually race hatred uh, not very far below the surface. Uh, it is extraordinary to me that uh, people are being attacked because of their race and their ethnicity. Uh, but nevertheless, that is what is happening. Uh, so these are some of the, the issues that the government have become involved in. They are using this crisis to replace the COVID crisis. They seem to believe that crisis should never be wasted, and that crisis can be used to attack our rights and our liberties. And we must stand against that. We must not allow ourselves to abandon our rationality and our clear-headedness. Uh, we did that during the COVID uh, scare, and I think we did a great deal of damage in the long term to our rights and liberties as a people. So this has been Michael Leahy of the Irish Freedom Party asking you to keep a cool head and not to listen to the propaganda that you are being fed by the government. Thank you.